So far in the class, we've primarily explored bent lamination um, as a way of creating curved forms. And this is in part because bent lamination is a great way uh, to create forms in a production manner, meaning to create consistent bent forms uh, that spring back about the same amount and that uh, have a high success rate and that are relatively easy to treat as a solid piece of wood after they're glued up uh, and dimension them on the machines. Uh, but I want to go into a few other possibilities for making curved forms. Uh, and one of these is going to be kerfing. So you may have seen these already. Uh, I use these guys as little sanding blocks. Uh, and they work great because since I've only kerfed them in one direction, they only want to bend in one direction. So they're really great for me to smooth out two-dimensional curves without worrying about rounding over the surface or creating little bumps or low points or inconsistencies on my curve. Uh, and you'll notice that, especially on this kerf block, uh, there's almost no material left. Like, really out of the long grain material, there's probably like a 30 second at most. Uh, and the rest is short grain. Uh, but that short grain still adds a lot of rigidity and structure to my curved blocks. Obviously, I can't like bend it very dramatically, uh, but I also chose oak to make these curved blocks out of because oak has extremely long, very bendy fibers, and it's going to be much more happy uh, to, to live as a curved sanding block long term. I've, I've had these guys, I think I made them about... Mm, seven or eight years ago, and they're still in good shape. Um, and that's curving only from one direction and only cross-cutting on the wood. Uh, this is an example of curving, uh, curving from both directions on both sides of the face of the, the board and both directions uh, horizontally and vertically. Uh, so this, again, creates a ton of short grain um, but creates an extremely bendable, twistable surface. So if I had layers of this curved block, I could glue these layers together into a lamination. Or if I just wanted this single thickness, I could skin it on either side with a piece of long grain veneer and uh, shore up all of the, these weak, weak points with my um, short grain running out. Uh, so you may have seen even, there's a couple designs out there that have a uh, cork that's been kerfed and the kerf layers have been glued together to form a compound curved lounge chair. So as soon as these layers start getting built up on each other, they start gaining strength. And as soon as these layers get skinned with veneer, they become a lot stronger. Uh, and in fact, there is a, uh, there is a pre-made curved board that you can buy for, for gluing up large curved panels for cabinet making and, and door making and that sort of thing. You're not limited to making curves just out of wood. Uh, you can also make them out of different materials. So here's an example that I made at one point in plastic uh, because I was having trouble finding a piece of plastic that would create a really uh, dramatically bent and twisted form that I could use as a template to flush cut, flush cut a giant piece of bent lamination. Uh, so I made this guy as a flush cut template. Um, so the, the bearing of the flush cut bit would r ride on the thickness of this plastic. And then the plastic, because it has no short grain, was pretty sturdy. Uh, it, it conformed to the compound curve surface really nicely. Uh, the, only, the only problem is that it was very time consuming to make. Uh, so in general, I don't think um, kerfing by itself has a whole lot of applications, but as soon as you start to mix kerfing into bent lamination uh, or to panel making, or even just to sanding blocks, then kerfing can really help you um, achieve some pretty dramatic curves.